Welcome to our midweek virtual Bible study here at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. Uh, on behalf of our members, uh, we certainly want to thank you for tuning in to our ministry. Uh, we strive in this pandemic uh, to keep you inspired through our worship, but also to keep you edified and encouraged uh, through our weekly Bible study. So thank you uh, on behalf of the members of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, for joining us, uh, to all of our virtual guests. Uh, to the members of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, as always, I have to give you a shout out, praying for you. Uh, know that your pastor loves you and I miss you. Uh, but certainly I thank you for tuning in uh, and for sharing uh, our ministry, uh, both on Sundays, Wednesday nights, and even our daily uh, devotions uh, with other people who need to be encouraged. So God bless you. Uh, continue to be safe. Uh, our Bible study today is going to come from Genesis chapter 45. And we're going to take a look at verses 16 through 28. Uh, it deals with a story uh, in the life of Jacob and his sons, uh, obviously uh, including Joseph. Uh, Joseph, uh, as many may or may not know, is probably uh, one of my most significant uh, characters in the scriptures, uh, with the exception of Jesus Christ. Uh, but when it comes to the Old Testament, Joseph and his story is extremely uh, 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 relevant uh, to me and to my life and to my ministry. Uh, and so I just want to share just a, uh, a bit of Genesis chapter 45, uh, verses 26, uh, verses 16 through 28. I'm not going to read them all. But it says, Now when the news was heard in Pharaoh's house that Joseph's brother had come, brothers had come, it pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your beast, and go to the land of Canaan. Take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are ordered to do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Do not concern yourselves with your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Uh, and I think just for context, I'll go ahead and read the rest. Verse 21, Then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh and gave them provisions for the journey. To each of them he gave changes of garments, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. To his father he sent as follows, 10 donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and sustenance for his father on the journey. Just want to jump to verse 26 and 27. Uh, then he told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and indeed he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. But he was stunned, for he did not believe them. When they told him all the words of Joseph that he had spoken to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of his father Jacob was revived. Again, that's Genesis 45. I read a uh, majority of the verses uh, from verses 16 through 28, and I'm going to talk about God's abundant provision. God's abundant provision. I encourage you to take notes. Uh, these are things that you might want to make reference to uh, later in your week. Uh, but our Bible study topic today is God's abundant provision. I want to say this. Uh, rightly observed uh, and rightly stated, uh, heresy, which is false teaching, is really truth out of balance. In other words, uh, whenever anything is taught uh, wrong from scripture that we categorize as heresy or false teaching, it actually has some semblance of truth, but it tends to be out of balance. For example, uh, there are many uh, who teach totally that we are saints and that we're not sinners. Won't even mention the fact that we're sinners saved by grace. And so to teach that we are saints, but that we don't sin anymore uh, is truth out of balance. Uh, as we talk about God's abundant provision, we also see a truth that is often taken out of balance. And that is the idea of God blessing us and God blessing us abundantly. Understand that this teaching from the word of God, when pushed out of balance, is truth. Oh, it is true that God provides abundantly for his people. It is a precious truth that is taught throughout the Bible. But whenever this truth is coupled with greed and materialism, 
it winds, winds up being uh, taught and shared out of balance. And so I want to give a balanced perspective to God's abundant provision. It is not a God-given right for every believer to simply be able to demand or claim that God bless us. God blesses us by his grace and not on our merit. But also the pendulum can also swing in the other direction. And the other direction is this. We can go to the extreme uh, to try to correct an imbalance that can lead to overcorrection and we neglect the truth of scripture that God does want to bless us. And so we've got to find uh, that middle way. We've got to find the right balance uh, where the Bible teaches us about God's abundant blessings. And we find this in Genesis chapter 45 with the story Joseph and his sons and him being them being reunited with Joseph. In Genesis 45, 16 through 28, it shows us God's abundant provision for his people. God provides for Jacob and his sons beyond what they could ever imagine or they could ever dream. Jacob sends his sons to Egypt to buy grain. Why does he do that? He does it because it had been announced there was going to be a seven-year famine in the land. And so now we find, I believe, two years into the famine, there were five years left, uh, Jacob sends his sons into Egypt in order to buy grain. When he sends them into Egypt to buy this grain so that they could feed the family and survive, much like many people are doing right now, uh, we don't know how much longer the pandemic is going to come. We know uh, that the vaccine, they're saying, may come at the middle of next year. Uh, and so many uh, news uh, agencies and advocates and many stories are telling people to go out uh, and save up uh, certain items uh, for what may be coming. Uh, in much the similar same way as the famine had hit the land, Joseph had sent his sons to Egypt in order to buy grain. Now, Jacob, when you follow the story, would have simply been, ha been happy with his son Benjamin returning home. He would have been happy uh, with Simeon, uh, his other son, being returned. But yet we find uh, that uh, his hopes, even though they were limited, uh, God would give him much more than he thought that he would be happy for. In fact, Jacob also would have been happy because his sons, in their trips to Egypt, uh, had taken some money that did not belong to them because they wanted to be able to buy more supplies. So understand, uh, Jacob would have simply been happy uh, with the minimum amount of what was going on. But guess what? God does way more than Jacob could have even imagined. So what is it that Jacob sees as his sons are returning? If we look at Genesis 45 in its totality, uh, we'll discover... Uh, again, you remember the story of Joseph, how his, these same brothers sold him into slavery, uh, how Joseph wound up uh, being in prison for an incident that took place in Potiphar's house, uh, false accusations. Uh, through all of these ordeals, he rose to a very prominent position uh, in Egypt under Pharaoh. Actually, he was second in command. He was in charge of the treasury. Uh, Jacob uh, and his sons had not seen Joseph in years. Uh, and when they found out that it was Joseph, they were afraid that somehow Joseph uh, might want to exact some retribution. He might want to pay them back for what had taken place. But Joseph, being a man after God's own heart like David, told his brothers, uh, God sent me on ahead of you in order that I might be in a position to be able to make these provisions and provide things for you ahead of time. So don't be greed within your heart. What you meant for evil, God meant even for your good. So what is it that Jacob saw? There are basically four lessons about God's provision and how God provides that I want to share with you. Number one, God provides abundantly for all of our needs. God provides abundantly for all of our needs. How do I know that? When you look in this text that I read in Genesis 45, particularly when you get down to verse 21 and 22, Here's how God provided for their material needs, Jacob and his sons. It says that they were given wagons. Now, you may think a wagon, nothing special to talk about, nothing special to write home about, but you need to understand that Jacob and his sons, they were sheep herders. They had some old carts, but Pharaoh sent them back home 
with some Egyptian wagons. In other words, that was an upgrade from their old shepherd carts to some Egyptian wagons. But we also see that these shepherds, who would have been wearing the typical clothes of a shepherd, it says that Pharaoh through Joseph gave them Egyptian clothes. So imagine this. They went from their poor, uh, raggedy shepherd's clothes to Egyptian cotton. I think that's God applying, uh, 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 providing for uh, our special needs. And then he also gave them food supplies. Uh, food supplies not only for themselves, but also for their livestock. Uh, here's the lesson from point one I want us to understand. God will bless us with material things. The important thing for us to realize and to keep in perspective is that when God blesses us materially, we are not owners, we are stewards or managers. In other words, it helps us to remember that every good and perfect gift comes from God. And because God gave it to us, we shouldn't use it, we shouldn't uh, handle it as if it's an entitlement we should handle it and be thankful that God has given it to us by his grace and by his mercy. So as God provides our abundant provision, God provides for our material needs. But here's the second thing we notice. God provides abundantly for our emotional needs. I know you need your material needs met, but the scripture also helps us to understand that God provides for our emotional needs. Jacob was emotionally needy, just as he and his family were uh, materially needy. Uh, he was in emotional distress. Uh, he thought that he had lost his favorite son, that being Joseph. Uh, when we get to this text, uh, he had not seen Joseph in 20 years because Joseph had been sold into slavery. And so in his mind, he had been grieving over a son who he didn't know whether he was alive or dead for 20 years. He was emotionally needy. Not only that, he had the fear that he may have lost his youngest son, Benjamin, and also Simeon, because they had gone on trips earlier, and they and Joseph had required uh, Benjamin to stay, but Simeon said, I'll stay in my brother's place. So not only had he lost one son for 20 years, but he also faced the prospect of losing Benjamin and also Simeon. But notice this. God restored Jacob's family. This really amounts to a family reunion because they had been a family in dysfunction. Whenever you have a family where brothers sell another brother into slavery, that's dysfunctional. Uh, whenever, like Joseph, uh, you have a number of sons uh, from two or three different women uh, and the women aren't getting along, and then some sons are treated better than others. Uh, the sons of Rachel were treated better than the sons of Leah. There was a great deal of family dysfunction. But I want you to understand something. In this episode, God met the emotional needs of Jacob and his family. And I want you to understand, God wants you to be emotionally whole. He not only wants to provide abundantly before your material needs, God also wants to provide and has provided abundantly for your emotional needs. Thirdly, we see that God provides abundantly for our spiritual needs. God's ultimate goal for you and I is to bless us spiritually. Yes, he can and he will meet our material needs. Yes, God can and he will meet our emotional needs. But understand, God's primary uh, goal is to meet our spiritual need. He always has a spiritual reason uh, behind uh, every material blessing that he supplies or that he withholds. For instance, in John chapter 6, when they noticed uh, the 5,000 that Jesus fed, that was not counting uh, women and children, sitting on the hillside, hungry, Jesus met their material need. But he didn't meet their material need simply to meet the material need. He met their material need in order to position them to hear his spiritual teaching. So God will meet our spiritual need. Uh, Jacob and his sons had been on a long journey. Uh, but this long journey 
was in order to work out God's spiritual purposes. This thing that you are going through is not just happening to you. This thing that happened with Joseph and his sons was not just happening. God was shaping them for something else. And you need to understand that whatever you are going through, God will meet material, emotional needs in order to meet your spiritual needs because God is shaping and preparing you for something. God has provided abundantly for you and I in Christ. He has abundantly provided for all of our spiritual needs in Jesus Christ. Now, I know you're saying, preacher, pastor, this is a nice sermonette. This is a nice Bible study about God providing abundantly for all our needs. But I've got to be honest. He hasn't done that for me. Some of you are listening to my teaching and you're saying, yes, I agree with all of that. I've seen God do it for others. I've seen God meet material needs. I've seen God meet emotional needs. I've seen God meet spiritual needs. But I've got to honestly confess, I don't see God doing this for me. He hasn't done it for me. A couple of things that I want you to understand. God provides for our needs in his own timing and not ours. God provides for our needs in his own timing and not ours. If you'll take a look at Genesis chapter 45 and verse 27. It says, and this is Joseph, I mean uh, Jacob they're talking about. When they told Jacob all the words of Joseph that he had spoken to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob was revived. Jacob's spirit was almost extinguished. He was in despair. He was ready to give up and give out. Because he felt like God had abandoned him. Felt like God had not met him to meet his needs. But we see God did meet his need, but God did it in his own timing. Uh, when we get to the point that we are wondering what happened to God, we need to realize that whenever we get to that point in our life where we have our total needs uh, needing to be met, it is only at that point when our total needs need to be met that you and I are ready to receive from God. Joseph, being at the point where his spirit was extinguished, poised, primed, and positioned him to be revived by God. So understand, others may have their needs met, you may still be waiting, but when you are wondering where God is in your life, that is exactly when God will step in and meet your need. But also understand that God provides in ways that you and I would never expect. He not only provides in his own timing, but he provides in ways that you and I would never expect. Uh, Jacob would never have expected that Joseph would have to go on a long 20-year journey away from the family in order for God to meet his needs. But that's the way God works. And then he also met their needs by a foreign king, a pharaoh in Egypt. Understand, God provides through grace and not merit. And when I say that, I want you to understand, Jacob and his sons, they weren't some good guys. They had a lot of stuff in their past. They had a lot of baggage. They had a lot of skeletons in the closet. This was a dysfunctional family. They did not deserve God's blessing. But here's why they were blessed. They were blessed because of Joseph. Pharaoh blessed them because of Joseph's name. He had a great appreciation, affinity, and love for Joseph. He didn't know anything about Joseph's family. In fact, he probably knew all of the things that Joseph's family had done to Joseph, would have, which would have given Pharaoh many reasons not to bless him. But guess what? He blessed Jacob and his family because of Joseph. That's just like you and I. None of us deserves God to bless us. We uh, don't deserve God's material blessings. We don't deserve God meeting our emotional needs. We don't even deserve God meeting our spiritual needs. But guess what? Psalm 23 says that he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God blesses us through Jesus Christ, not because of what we merit, but he does it for his own name. He does it so he can get glory through us. And so we need to understand that God does abundantly bless, but guess what? You cannot be blessed 
if you're not tapped into the right source. Uh, I had the wonderful privilege, and I've shared with my church and others, of going on a mission trip to Columbia uh, in August of last year, just August uh, of 2019, uh, right before the pandemic hit. While I was uh, uh, in uh, Columbia, uh, we visited Bogota and Cartagena. In both places, we stayed in some nice hotels. The team of pastors and I were in some nice hotels, uh, running, flowing water. The areas that we went to did not have nice flowing water. So much so that some of the people who lived in these scarce areas where there was no flowing water had an opportunity to visit our hotel and they were enamored with the water faucets. And what they were enamored with was that there was flowing water constantly from these faucets. So much to the point that many of these people went and got wrenches and they wanted to take the water faucets back to their places of scarcity. But here's the lesson. Water faucets don't do you any good if they're not connected to an abundant water supply. You and I need to understand. God can only bless us if we are connected to the right source. That right source is God. It says in John chapter 15 and verse 5 that unless we abide in Him, we can do nothing and we won't experience the wonderful benefits and provisions that God has for us. Don't continue to exist as a faucet not connected to the supply. Allow your life to be connected to God. Connect to God through worship. Connect to God through study of his word. Connect to God by being connected with other believers. But as you are connected to God, you'll see, not just from the words of the Bible, you'll see that God will abundantly provide. This is a very important lesson right now because we are living in a nation right now where products on the shelves are scarce, uh, where our economy is very uncertain uh, because we've had to open and close. Uh, some things are partially open. We don't know what's going to happen with flu season and the continuing of the pandemic. But understand that if you remain connected to God, no matter what's going on, God will abundantly provide your needs. I thank you for tuning in to our Bible study. Uh, again, I want to continue to give you reminders. Uh, you can tune into our virtual worship each and every Sunday at noon. You can tune into our weekly Bible study each Wednesday at 6 p.m. And you can also receive daily devotions uh, through our ministry each morning at 8 a.m. Uh, through all social media outlets, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and then you can also visit our church website, uh, which is fbcnt.org. Also on our church website, you can find information about our church, our history. You can also find uh, a way in which you can support us financially by giving online. And if that's not your preference and you are so led, we invite you to support us uh, by sending your contributions to our post office box. I thank God for you, uh, and I pray that the remainder of your week is certainly blessed. Uh, let us close in prayer. God, we thank you for your rich grace and mercy. God, we thank you for your abundant provision. God, help us to know that you meet our material, emotional, emotional, and most of all, our spiritual needs as we are connected to you, our true source. You are the fountain of all life. God, we thank you. We pray, God, for healing for those who are sick. We pray, God, restoration for those, oh God, who need restoration in various areas of their life. And God, we pray for our nation. We pray for our world. Uh, we pray, God, for healing. Uh, in race relations. We pray, God, uh, for healing in the polarization that exists in our political climate. Most of all, God, we pray that we would remain faithful to you in all that we do and uh, all that we declare. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.